Hey, welcome to Donkey Bird. This is jumping from the top of the tower in three, two, one. Woo! <laughs> awesome. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Minecraft Hardcore. Now, as you can see, I've been having some fun in my creative world, and when I was there, I noticed something, and I had to come and check it out in the hardcore world and see if it is the same as it was in the creative world. And, uh, no, it's, it's not there. Hang on, where was it? Ah, back this way. And I had to come check it out because I think I have found my missing villagers. Just look at them, all of them in there, packed in like sardines. What a bunch of idiots. Anyway, we're going to set them free, so we're going to need to take out this wall over here. And, whoa, this sheep is very anxious to get out, and I don't blame him because he's been locked up in there with 25 very hungry guys for quite a while. And that is the face of an animal who knows just how close he came to being dinner. Anyway, we've saved the sheep, we've set the villagers free, and, yeah, they're not in a big rush to get out of here. And I've no idea why they were attracted to this space in the first place. Um, there's nothing interesting in there. Don't come back up. Oh, okay, now you can get through there. That's fine. Anyway, as I was saying, I have no idea what attracted them to this hole in the first place. And I'm not going to try and solve that mystery because I've got a lot of work to do. And I think it is just about time for me to get on with today's episode. And today we have an absolute mammoth task on our hands because we are going to complete the castle. Now it's been about three weeks since I've done any work around here and during that time I have been planning, I have been designing and it is finally time ladies and gentlemen to bring all of that work and finally create it in our hardcore world. So let's go. And the first thing we're going to need is some materials. Now we're going to need an absolute ton of the stuff. Now some of it we have already gathered like the stone. Others are easy enough to get our hands on, like some sand. And some of it is going to require a little bit more grinding, like concrete. But all in all, most of the stuff is quite easy to get our hands on, except for one or two items, and one of those items is quartz. Now, our mason guild has been out of commission since the fire, so we need to come up with another way to get our hands on some quartz. And for that, we have come to the nether, because I'm going to set up a piglin bartering farm. I've got the gold farm right here, and I've built up a nice little stockpile of gold, which we can use to get us started. But first, I'll need to build the bartering farm, and, well, I've never built one of these before, so I have absolutely no idea what I'm doing. I'm just going to get started. I haven't looked up how to do this exactly, so I'm just going to go with my gut and see where that takes me. And this is the monstrosity that I have come up with. I've got two sets of rails up there, one to feed the droppers, and the other one has some detector rails, which activates the droppers. Now, the further I get into this build, the more and more I'm thinking that I have built something that is completely useless and is not going to work at all. Down here, I've got some hopper minecarts feeding into a hopper, feeding into a chest, which, well, I think is just a little bit overkill. But worst of all, I think those droppers are firing way too fast for the piglins to effectively get the gold and most of it is simply going to end up in the chests below them. So it's off to the redstone world for me to do a little bit of tinkering. And we're back and no surprise, I'm tearing the entire thing down and starting from scratch because in a very short space of time I've been able to come up with something much, much better. And here we go, version 2 of my bartering farm is finally done. It's a lot simpler, it's a lot more effective, and it works absolutely beautifully. At least it worked beautifully in my test world, but we're gonna build it here, and then we're gonna get ourselves some piglins. We've got our first trader, and I don't know how happy he is that he's in this boat with me, because all the time while I was trying to get him into the boat, he couldn't decide whether he was angry at me or not. He kept raising his sword, lowering his sword. It was the weirdest thing. I have no idea what's going on. But he's calmed down somewhat and we're making our way very, very slowly to the bartering farm. 
And as it turns out, it was way too slow, so we just... Um, oh no, 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 no. I thought the rails would make it easier and quicker to get him there. Apparently, I am just pushing him in the wrong direction. Stop! And we finally managed to get him in the right spot. Now, all I need to do is go in there, break his minecart, and then he will neatly drop into his bartering position. So, let's break the minecart and... Um, uh, he's not gonna fit in there, is he? Oh, well, that's easily remedied. I'll just break this piece of glass down here. And, okay, that's got into the hopper. And now we try it. Oh, okay, he got in himself. That is very, very accommodating of you, good sir. Thank you very much. And this is going much better than I expected. We've got trader number two on his way, and soon he'll be in position as well. And I must say, these guys have simply gotten into their spot without any question or any argument, and it makes me wonder what on earth is going wrong, because everything is just going way too easy. Alrighty, piglin number three, let's get you into your spot. First, we'll turn our boat around, and then we'll start paddling. And piglin number three is in. Let's just block him up. Why are these guys getting into these holes so easily? I do not understand what's going on. Usually this is just frustration upon frustration. But for some odd reason, this has gone very smoothly. And I finally figured out why everything was going so smoothly. I forgot to name tag piglin number two and number three and they are gone. So we're left with just trader number one, which I did name tag, and we need to go find him some new friends. And there we go, look at that. I mean, is he angry? Is he not? Is he just enjoying waving his sword around? I have no idea what's going on, and what the heck is that noise? This guy is the only one around here, and yet it sounds like there's a million of them. I don't know, there's obviously some sort of glitch going on here. But I'm just going to step back a little bit and let him calm down. And there we go. We finally have all of our piglins in place and we've been doing some bartering. My farm is working absolutely beautifully. And I think it's time for me to set up a little hidey hole. Just hang out here and see if these guys produce the goods. Because I need a lot of quartz. So let the waiting game begin. And, uh, yeah, we're about halfway through our stash of gold, and so far it's not great news. On the quartz front, I don't have much to show for all of the gold that I've spent here, but I did get a bunch of other good stuff as well. I've got some leather, I've got some soul speed books, and I think maybe I should just hole up here for a little while longer, spend all the gold I've got in the machine at the moment, and see where that leaves us. So, it's the waiting game, round two. And round two didn't go much better than round one, so I'm doing what I probably should have just done right from the start. I've got some villagers, I've zombified and cured them a few times, and now I'm going to train them as masons. So once again, there'll be life in the old masons guild, and I will be able to buy all of the quartz that I need. Now, I've already got four masons in there, I've trained them up, they're all at master level, and this one will be my fifth. And once again, this has gone quite smoothly. Let's get you out of the minecart, and that is very, very cooperative of you, good sir. Thank you very much. Now, this has taken me a fraction of the time that it took me to design and build the piglin trading farm, but now I have one, and it's giving me plenty of good stuff, so time well spent. And we are finally ready to start building. Just look at all of the goodies that I have assembled here. So much, in fact, that I have run out of shulker boxes and have had to put most of my stuff into chests. Now, before we get started on the bulk of the build, I just have a few admin tasks to take care of here. Firstly, I'm going to need to light up this entire field down here. Because once I start building, this is going to turn into a giant mob farm. And we've got a ton of torches placed down. Next, I want to just build a little bit of a platform out here where I can work from. Because at the moment, I have to land very carefully in order to prevent myself from falling down there and then just wasting another rocket trying to get out. So I've got a few stacks of stone on me. I'm just going to lay it out all the way up to here and that should give me 
a nice little platform where I can stand and it's gonna make my life a lot easier. So let's get all of the stone in here, get this all covered up and this really shouldn't take me too long. And with our platform completed, we are almost ready to get started. I just need one more thing and that is a ton of wool. And the problem is that my wool farm is extremely slow. As you can see, I've got a few stacks of wool here. I need some cyan, some light blue and some blue wool. But right now I am woefully short on all three. Now if you look up top there, you'll see a ton of all three blocks up there. And I'm going to tear down this entire floor because I want to replace it with something else, something that looks absolutely spectacular. But even with all of this, I am starting to doubt whether I'm going to have close to enough wool. I think I need shears for this, don't I? Let's see. Okay, grab the shears and oh yeah, much, much better. So I'm going to tear up this entire floor, see how much wool that gives me. And I'm holding my fingers crossed that this is going to provide me with all of the wool I need. So let's go to town and let's get this wrecked. And I've got all the wool from the top floor and I am still woefully short. I need about 16 stacks each of the light blue, the cyan and the blue wool. And as you can see, I am not even close. I've got just over 19 stacks of the light blue wool. And I don't think the cyan and the blue is much better off. In fact, I think, yep, I have even less of those. But we'll pop them in here real quick. We'll see how much I have and then it's going to be time to make a decision. Do we continue with the concept I have or do I decide to go for something else? And yeah, I have about nine stacks, 10 stacks of each. And this unfortunately is simply not enough. And the decision has been made. Instead of wool, I'm going to go with a polished deep slate and birch floor. I've already designed one for the other piece that I've just taken down and it looks fantastic. So no reason for me to not carry on with that theme throughout the rest of the build. However, once again, I find myself very short on deep slate, which means I have to do some digging. But fortunately, it's a lot easier and a lot quicker to dig up a few stacks of deep slate than it is to actually go and find stacks and stacks of colored wool. So let's dig up some deep slate. And let's harvest some birch. And once this is done, I will have everything I need to complete this build. And at this point, I'm going to point out that I will be using Lightmatica in this build simply because it is absolutely monstrous in size. And if I were to work from reference picks, then this episode probably won't reach you for another month or two. And nobody wants to see that happen. So here we go. Let's grab the last of this birch. And then finally, ladies and gentlemen, it is time for us to get serious. It is time for us to start building. And we're going to jump into a time lapse, a massive time lapse. And we are going to witness my magnum opus, the biggest build I have ever done, take shape right before our very eyes. I hope you're as excited as I am because, ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be a big one.
And finally, after about 20 hours of building and many, many more hours of designing and gathering materials, ladies and gentlemen, it is done. And I am extremely proud of what I have managed to create here. This is without a shadow of a doubt the biggest, the most impressive, and I would argue the most beautiful thing that I have ever created in Minecraft. We have towers reaching high into the sky, flags fluttering in the wind atop them, and from almost every angle, this castle is looking phenomenal. And to the left of it all is the Great Tower, the Grand Tower surrounded by four smaller towers, and of course, on top of that, the greatest flag of them all. And looking at all of this, considering all of the time and all of the effort that has gone into its creation, I finally have to ask myself the question, was it worth it? And I think the answer is a resounding yes, it definitely was. But we are not quite done yet ladies and gents, for as you can see there is a little feature in this tower, a little hole, and while it is fun to thread the needle with some rockets and my elytra, that is not what it's for. This ladies and gentlemen is the new nether portal. And we're gonna light it up and just look at it. Let's take a step back and then we can witness the finished tower. And it is looking absolutely incredible. Now, of course, this is just a shell. It's got no interior and I'm not sure when or even if it ever will have one. Who knows, maybe one day I will build one for it. But that, ladies and gentlemen, is unfortunately all we have time for today. I really do hope you enjoyed this episode. Leave a like if you did, and if you want to see some more, be sure to hit that subscribe button. But this is Fungosaurus Rex saying, until next time beautiful people, stay awesome. Bye-bye.